All right, I am back once again, and I've kind of strayed from my natural Nikon rangefinder line to revisit the Mamiya 7 a little bit. Uh, if you've watched my videos, you know I, I did a video on this camera quite a while ago. It must have been almost three years ago. Uh, and I was not blown away by it. Uh, but I, I think my opinions have kind of changed over time, so I was going to revisit it and talk a little bit more about what I've done with it, show off a couple more photos I've taken, and uh, hopefully somebody will find this useful or entertaining. Uh, one of the first things, I, I hate to go into too much background here, but I, I bought this essentially at the very beginning of the pandemic. I got a pretty good price on this camera body, uh, this 43mm lens with uh, the accessories, the, uh, the caps and lens hood and viewfinder kept in this little pouch. Uh, and I used them a lot when I first got it because it also came with an 80mm lens that had really bad blasm separation. And I, I basically got it for free because it was so damaged and I ended up throwing it out because it was in such poor shape. So I shot the camera almost exclusively with this lens and this kind of setup for a few months at least. And I shot a couple of rolls of Kodak Ektar and Kodak Portra 160, I think. Not too impressed with it. I also shot a few rolls of black and white. Black and white. I think it was uh, Kodak Tri-X, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I was not blown away. I liked the lens. I was kind of mixed on some of my results, and I think a lot of that was the film. Um, some of it might have been the lens. It, it, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, anyways, I ended up buying the 65mm lens. I think I mentioned that and had it in the previous video, but I, I don't quite remember. Uh, and I didn't use it a whole lot, because I'd already shot a couple of rolls with the other lens, and I was like, okay, this is fine. I know I have shot a couple of rolls of black and white on this, but even that was about a year ago. Uh, and I just thought I would kind of follow up, because I have been shooting on this lens more. Essentially what happened is I was trying to sell the camera. I knew a couple people who were photographers. I, I offered it to them and said, hey, if you have any friends who'd be interested in this, let me know. I'll offer a pretty reasonable price for the whole setup. Nobody was really interested. And I was actually telling this to one of my friends who's a pretty serious photographer, not so much a camera collector or, you know, a person of that nature. And he asked, you know, what I'd shot it on. And he asked why I hadn't used more color film. And I was like, you know, what? it's just kind of expensive. And he was like, well, I think that's part of your problem. You should have used it more with color film because I think with those lenses, that's where the system really shines. And I thought, you know, that's, that's not a bad point. Most of the good work I've seen from a Mia 7 has been shot on, like, a good quality color film. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of Portra, so I wasn't a big fan of going after that one. But I noticed the new Kodak Gold had come out, and it had actually been marked down early this year, so I bought a few boxes of it. And I've been shooting on this uh, camera in this lens with the uh, Kodak, and I've been a lot more impressed with it. You know, there's just a little lens cap. I do that on some of mine. It's a generic lens cap, but I write my what's uh, kind of an approximation of my name in Japanese. I was kind of like that little personal touch of mine, but just something I thought I'd throw out there. Uh, so I've been shooting this lens a lot more. And actually, when I when I shoot the lens, or I mean this camera, I almost always have this lens on it. I'm not really using the 43 anymore. The 43 is a good lens, and I like wide angle lenses. But I, I think over time, I've come to realize that more of a modest to standard wide angle like on, on a full frame camera 35 millimeter something more like a 35 or a 28 is kind of what i lean towards a 24 is okay but sometimes they feel a bit too wide and anything wider than 24 feels a bit gimmicky and with this lens i think it's equivalent on a 35 millimeter camera is something about like a 24 so it is pretty wide whereas the 65 is closer to a 35. Uh, I hope that's making sense. I know it's a little weird, but this is essentially pretty close to um, some setup like uh, this one right here, my my Nikon FM with the 35 millimeter lens. It's an old old one I did a review on. Again, it's got kind of the, the same cap. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was something that was kind of noteworthy, and I've been a lot more impressed with it. I think some of it was just using the Kodak Gold. I think some of it was probably using the 65 millimeter lens, which I think is more of a versatile lens for just kind of walking around for lack of a better term uh, and I bought a few boxes of Kodak Gold. I've, I've still got right here there's two full boxes and about a, a half one so I have I think I bought five in total so I'm less than halfway through it and I got a couple rolls developed from it and I was pretty impressed so I'll, I'll show those off uh, but all in all I have to say I am liking this camera and this lens and this film combo and um, I think I, I guess what I'm trying to go with is there, there's something about that. I, I think part of the problem I had with this camera originally was um, I was kind of, I was kind of afraid to shoot a lot of color film on it because color film is a little more expensive, and especially when you're shooting this um, 120 format and you're shooting a six by seven, you only get 10 shots per roll on this camera, which is kind of alarming if you're not used to film. And even if you're used to film, that just really isn't a lot. Uh, but I have found this has made me a little bit more cautious, and it's made me kind of look for good stuff and 
take a good photo. And even sometimes when I, I kind of change my angle or change my exposure a little bit and take two shots, I generally feel like I'm probably getting something a little bit better and it's kind of worth those two shots because unfortunately on a camera like this even with this cheaper Kodak gold film I always send it off to a lab to develop it because I think they do the best especially with color and uh, you're, you're paying uh, I think close to two dollars a shot maybe a little less but it's at least a dollar and eighty cents US for one shot on this camera and one of the frustrating things with the the Mamiya is that it is a rangefinder so when the caps on you don't notice and I hate to admit it but I, especially in the early days I did ruin a couple of shots by shooting with the cap on and with the the original Mamiya 7 there's no double exposure or anything so you can't kind of go back and try to save that shot it's just unfortunately kind of lost um, and that is a bit distressing when it happens but I, I have kind of learned from that over the past couple of years and uh, I guess that's just something I was trying to hammer home is that you can't really be afraid to shoot with the camera I think you have to go out and shoot with the camera and kind of learn it some and get used to it and expose yourself to it uh, before you're necessarily going to get good shots. I don't think you're necessarily going to buy a camera and immediately start taking better shots with it Or I don't think you're gonna like buy a film and it's gonna make everything look amazing because it's you know Slightly different from the previous film stock you were using and you know And I, I think those are misconceptions some people have out there. I don't know how common they are um, But I, I do feel like some people have those miscon misconceptions and uh, a lot of I think the skill in photography comes from just repeated practice and exposure and just building up an innate skill level. And uh, I think that's something I had to kind of relearn with this camera. And I think it was a painful process again, because you're only getting 10 shots in a roll with this camera. I just thought there was something to be said about that, about using this camera, uh, having a lens that was, you know, kind of versatile. I still, in some ways, if I had a choice, I think I'd rather have the 80 millimeter lens than the 65. I know a lot of people will say the 65 is better. I have it. I like it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure because I haven't really used the 80. Yeah, but I just thought that was something kind of interesting. I, I had this camera for a while and I was kind of afraid to use it. I think another part was that it was it was an expensive camera. Uh, and I mean, I didn't really pay an absolute fortune for it, but it was not cheap. And I did have some idea in my mind that like, oh, I can kind of sit on it. I got a good price. I can use it a little bit and I can kind of resell it. And, you know, at that time through like 2021 and 2022, the camera markets were going up a lot. Things were getting very expensive, especially with Leica's just got like, they went from being expensive to just being comically expensive. And a lot of other things, a lot of, um, a lot of the older cameras that weren't very popular, like a lot of the half frame ones and a lot of those type cameras went from being like not very popular and cheap to more popular and you know more moderately priced and I mean you could say that about a lot of different cameras over time but it did seem like in that time frame 2021 2022 camera prices were generally going up quite a bit and I think I had some delusion I was going to sell this camera and make a big profit off of it and I was going to I was going to get a big return like double my money and it became more of an investment than a camera and I kind of set it around and I I wanted to make sure that it stayed kind of like safe and clean and it didn't really get uh, scratched up even though the, the camera is pretty heavily used when I got it and you can see it's got some wear there and on the the film advance lever and the bottom has some uh, it's not in perfect shape but it does work uh, actually the I don't think the self timer works now that I mention it. I don't, I don't think I've ever gotten that to work, but I'm not 100% sure how it works. The button's still on there, so that's better than some of them. Point being, I think I sat on this camera too long because I kind of, I, I got kind of caught up in the cost. I was afraid of the cost of film and sending it off to get properly developed at a lab. I had some delusion I was going to sell it and make a big profit. This was some big investment, so to speak. And uh, I think it, that was kind of a misstep because I didn't really use the camera much and I, I kind of dabbled. Like I said, I used a lot of cheaper black and white films and developed them at home and I don't think I got very good results for it. And I probably shouldn't have even been dabbling in that to begin with. I probably should have gotten a decent color film stock and bought a couple of boxes and shot with it and just gotten better results. And I didn't do that. And I, you know, it's one of those things I should have known better. I preach all the time about, you know, not, not buying tons of stuff and not wasting tons of money on things. Um, and I think I kind of went the opposite and I, or I, I took that advice to the opposite extreme and I was afraid to essentially shoot this camera because I was going to spend some money on it. And I think that was a misstep that I've kind of learned from. Uh, and anyways, I'll just, you know, I'll show some images. I think they're pretty good. Uh, I don't really have much else to say, but I guess if there's some sort of point I wanted to hammer home, it's that, you know, you got to get out there and shoot and you can't be overly afraid of your camera getting kind of scratched up or damaged and theoretically being devalued. You can't be too worried about like, you know, sending off a, a roll of film or a couple of rolls of film to a lab and it costing a decent amount of money because, you know, it, it's not cheap. But if you want it done right, I think sometimes you got to pay to have it done right. And I think that's very true 
with a lot of things like home repair and car repair being one but i think with cameras that's also kind of a thing you've got to like especially if you're going to shoot film you got to be willing to buy a decent film stock and if you're not very good at developing yourself and you don't have you haven't built up a good dark room type setup at home it's probably better to just spend a little more and send it off to a lab so um that's pretty much my rambling hopefully somebody can take something away from this and uh get out there and keep shooting